Well, hello everyone and welcome. It's a great day to be outdoors. I'm here at the uh, Kensington Metro Park. Today I intend to do a short hike exploring some of the areas of the park that uh, most people don't venture into or they're not even aware of. Uh, some interesting things, nothing fantastic or mind-blowing, but just something you may not have known about and I've discovered in my in my wanderings about and I'd like to share them with you. So off we go into the woods. Our destination is up ahead in the woods. The play field here is uh, on the side of a large hill. You can see it in the distance there. And from that hill, it goes down into a little marsh down below. And that's our destination down there. So we've crossed out of the play field, crossed the road. And in front of us here, we're right on the edge of a very steep slope. You can see it going right down there to a marshy area. Bushwhacking, off we go into the tangle. Well, I'm gonna have to stop filming. I can't hold on to the camera and navigate at the same time. There's the hillside I just came down. Very, very steep, and it's north facing, so it doesn't get any sunlight, and it's covered with, with uh, oak leaves, and underneath the oak leaves, patches of ice. I was uh, pretty treacherous coming down that. I'm gonna go down through this little swale here, and up over the top of that little rise on the other side and down again to the marsh. Watch my footing here. It's funny, you know, the shadows are way more distinct in the view screen of the camera here than they are actually in front of me through my own eyes. up and over. All right, so we're over the hump, coming up on the wetland here, the cattail marsh. You can see over on the other side of the marsh there, another area of higher ground uh, with oak trees. How do we get over there? Well, that's our, that's our mystery right now. We'll see if it's still here. And it is, I see it straight ahead, right through there. Can you see it? It's a bridge over the swamp. <laughs> Does that look safe? <laughs> ah. I forget how I discovered discovered about this, but this this bridge here is I believe it was a uh uh an Eagle Scouts project. You know, all the Eagle Scouts when they when they go to make Eagle Scout grade, they have to do like a public service project. And I'm pretty sure this was a public service project for one of the Eagle Scouts and one of the local troops. Boy, <laughs> ah, moss and ice. I don't know if we're gonna be able to get across this thing. It's, it's quite a bit uh, more tilted than the last time I was here. I don't know. 
I'm going to be a tripod. I have, I have my two feet and my walking pole, so I'm going to be supported. Little baby steps. If I screw up and fall, there's a little stream here for me to fall into. Ah, you see that wind blowing there too. That is a sharp, sharp wind. It's about 28, 29 degrees in here, but that wind makes it feel like it's about 15 degrees. Oh, it's cold. All right, onward. I think we just we're on the easy part now when we get on this ice up here even though that the, the uh, bridge isn't canted quite so bad it's gonna be a lot slipperier two points in contact always and I don't know if you can see in there there's little critter footprints on the bridge, probably a raccoon. All right, onward. If I slip and fall, it'll all be on, on film here. You guys will get the last laugh. All right, I'm going to have to put the camera down to get through this. I'll, I'll see you on the other side. All right, I made it through. It wasn't easy, but I made it. So I, still, I still might fall off here because it's really hard to hang on to the camera and keep my footing too. There's what I had to come through. There we go, just 10 yards, 10 yards left. No obstacles. Whoa, it's cracking. No obstacles and it's almost level. Yeah, but look at this mess. How do I get through that onto solid ground? Holy cow. All right, put the camera away again. Ah, oh, yeah, can you see it? Oh, I can almost guarantee you there hasn't been a person across that bridge probably since the last time I crossed it about four or five years ago. I can almost guarantee. No one's as crazy as I am. There's really no, no sign of an old hiking trail here. It's kind of curious why that bridge was ever built there. If there was a hiking trail uh, through that through that swamp or up and out the other side, there's no sign of it now. No obvious uh, pathway through the woods here. It's a pretty spot, though. Quiet. And no one, no one ever comes here. If I'd have brought a little lunch, this would have would have been a good place to warm it up. Let's walk up to the top of that knoll there, and uh, see where my nose leads us from there. negotiate around all the fallen lumber here. Ooh, mistake, mistake. 
I'm in the thorn bushes. Back up. Rerouting. All that because I was too lazy to step over this log. I figured I'd go around the end there. Here's something interesting. You know, I, I mention on almost every one of my hikes when I'm out in the woods about these damn vines, these uh, oriental uh, bittersweet vines, how they, they're just pervasive and invasive. And once they take over, they just dominate the forest. You can see them hanging all over the place here. Well, the park has actually been proactive and they've been back in here cutting them see all these vines now cut off at the at the root the thing is though I've read about this oriental bittersweet that it's it's a uh, it's a very tough plant to eradicate almost impossible once once it gets a foothold in a forest almost impossible to eradicate because the seeds have a long life in the forest floor the plant itself is very tolerant of shade and also the roots are uh, I think it spreads by roots too I, I could be wrong but it, it's just almost impossible to get rid of so they've cut these root these vines off here but they'll have to be back in a few years and, and do it all over again <sighs> darn I just there's a whole herd of deer that's in front of me I just I just spooked them again. I just scared them off. They're going to stay ahead of me, just, just out of my reach. Uh, I'll be lucky if I get close to them. There must have been uh, at least eight or ten of them bounding away through those woods. Yeah, so I'm kind of tromping through area that I've, I've never tromped through before. I've never come this far into the woods, and I just come across... Uh, a path here goes that way and on that way I think what I've stumbled into this part of the park they have a, uh, a championship disc golf course and I think this might be part of that the only time this this uh, course is used is for uh, like sanctioned uh, championship events, disc golf, pro disc golf. Yeah, so I followed the path a little ways and right down there is a concrete pad in the middle of nowhere. The path pretty much leads to it. I'm guessing that's either the tee or the basket location for one of the holes. Yeah, so it's not concrete, it's just uh, crushed limestone. But it is smooth and flat and level. Sure looks like it's probably a T. I see if I got one other interesting thing I want to get to, try to get to. It's going to be probably a half a mile hike to get there. So when we get close, I'll turn the camera on again and talk to you then, all right? In the autumn, they drain down the uh, Kent Lake. They open the spillways at the dam and drain down the lake. Uh, it's always cool to be able to walk on the mud flats on the lake bottom where 
in the summertime you'd be under two feet of water here. Lucky me, it's uh, been pretty cold, below freezing, steady for the last two or three days. So this is all frozen solid. Otherwise, it would be, I'd be up to my uh, ankles in muck. I'm actually walking back to my truck right now. Uh, where I wanted to go is farther than I wanted to walk. It's shorter to walk back to the truck and drive there. So that's where I'm headed. Here's one of my favorite uh, Kensington views in any season. From the bridge crossing the Huron River. This is looking south. I got schmuck all over my boots. made it through that all right well i got sidetracked by all that beauty down there by the river but uh heading towards our other destination right now and i see it right up ahead right there Can you tell what that is shaped like an arrowhead And it has silhouetted outline of an Indian and a place where some kind of marker or badge used to be. This is a marker for the Chief Pontiac hiking trail. The Chief Pontiac trail is a Boy Scout trail. They come here to earn their uh, hiking badges, their merit badges. And the trail extends all the way from Kensington Park uh, into Proud Lake Park, runs along some uh, county roads for a few miles, then all the way into Highland Recreation Area where the other end of the trail is. There's a, uh, a camp midway along the trail 
in Proud Lake where the scouts can spend a night. So usually it's a it's an all weekend kind of thing for them. And uh, this is the end of the trail here, I'm pretty sure. The regional uh, scouting council uh, and their boys, they're really good about keeping the trail maintained, cleared and marked. Uh, but it's obvious they don't get over here and do it anymore. Not in this part. Yeah, this, this is a real thicket. Walk back in here, back towards the river and see if we can come across the trace of the trail. This is tough going. Vines, vines and whatnot snagging at my legs every step I take. Okay. The woods are opening up a little bit now. We may be able to find the old trail. snagged again. Five years or so when I was back here, I could still find vestiges of that trail, but man, I haven't seen anything yet down here. And basically, I should be right on top of it right now. Okay, okay, here it is. Here it is. Can you see the trace? Nice sycamore tree here. Interesting bark. Back to the Chief Pontiac Trail. I don't know how many miles long it is. Scouts hike it in two days. And uh, all along the trail at various locations are those uh, arrowhead markers. Many, many years ago, the, the Boy Scouts installed those markers. And uh, most of them are still there. One of them that was in Proud Lake was especially uh, vandalized, the uh, bullet holes, and that's, that one's disappeared. Somebody's, somebody's stolen that sign. I'm gonna turn the camera around and show you something interesting. Up there, see a post, some stonework. Uh, kind of a remnants of an old embankment here. Stones kind of arranged in a pattern on the ground. Now, this can be one of two things to me. It's either the foundation for an old cabin or it's uh, the abutment of the old Buno Road Bridge. So, I don't know. Uh, I don't think a bridge abutment would have been built out of poorly laid stone and that's obviously laid in an arch shaped pattern there for some reason it actually looks like there's an opening in the wall right here and it, the brick wall follows around in a curve Might have been a little like uh, someone's little private park or sitting area. Something round right here, like a pipe used to be in there. Heck, it might have been a spring float out of the hillside here. This concrete post. So 
I don't know what goes down there. It only goes in about three feet. Could that be an old well? Some concrete work here. Looks like stairs. Handrail, guardrail. Not sure what we got here. Interesting nonetheless. Hidden treasures of Kensington. Lost to time. Yeah, here's some uh, some some kind of metal work here, like uh, garden edging. Like there might have even been plantings here. The whole hillside here is covered with uh, periwinkle. I forget what the uh, botanical name is for it, but it's uh, like it's usually an escapee from gardens. So probably there were gardens here at one time landscaping. I don't know. My money's on well, spring, artesian well, free-flowing. That arch and that, that round thing like where a pipe came out. That's got to be it. All right, we're walking uh, northbound. Here's a uh, orange tape trail marking for the Chief Pontiac Trail. Very indistinct here. I'm not even sure I'm on it anymore. Oh, I see another orange tape up there on the tree. So I'm gonna I'm gonna end this hike for today. And we'll we'll continue with the Chief Pontiac Trail another time. I, I really want to track down all those arrowhead signs, show them to you, see how many of them are still there. So, so far we've counted one at the, at the terminus of the trail. And uh, from here we got a long way to go. So until that time, remember, it's never a bad day to be out in the woods. All right, I'm not done filming yet. I just, I just found something interesting here to show you. The trail's up there. I just jumped down here uh, at river level now. It's about six feet, probably, embankment there. But when I was standing up there, I noticed something on two trees here. Beaver gnawings. This tree here is a uh, probably a big tooth aspen, popple. Beavers love the bark as food. And so is that one. Let's go over there. Yep, that's a big tooth aspen too. And he's been really working at that. You can see his gnawing marks there. He's gone all the way around. But it's still standing. Pretzel has a mouth.